Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday was a snow apocalypse, and today, absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at the view over there. Stunning. It's a little bit cold. What's the time? 10.30 in the morning. And today I found my gloves, but I don't have a hat. And I probably should have brought my hat, but oh well. Today is a much better day for talking about the topic of this video, which is why you should consider moving to Russia. So guys, the first thing we're going to talk about today is cultural conservatism. So Russia is still a culturally conservative country. So here, family values are very important. Also, a man is a man and a woman's a woman and there's nothing else. So it's okay to feel something different you know you can feel a bit more like a woman or a bit feel a bit like a man but um, it's binary you're either a man or you're a woman and that's it wow guys it's absolutely beautiful here today the sun feels quite warm i'd love to just get a chair and sit in this snow for a while and also guys um in Russia, people want to have children. They want to create families. Where in the West, uh, people are being told that humans are a cancer on the earth and uh, they're contributing to global warming. Now, Russians also believe in the sanctity of marriage. So almost every woman wants to get married here and create a family. Uh, unfortunately, the divorce rates uh, in this country are not very enviable. Also, everybody, there's no uh, woke or cancel culture in this country, so you're not guilty for the behavior of your ancestors from hundreds of years ago. Also, guys, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity in Russia. In fact, the more that you act like a man in this country, the more you'll be rewarded. So the Russian women here don't have time for blubbering little emotional pansies like there are in the West. Now everybody, let's talk about feminism. It'll come as no great surprise for me to say that feminism is not generally popular in this country. Like I said before, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Most women here are not uh, interested in equality of the sexes. So yeah, guys, if you're a Western man coming to Russia, you're expected to fulfill your obligations of being a man. And uh, she can fulfill her obligations of being a woman. And now another thing, everybody, LGBTQ propaganda is banned in Russia. It used to be just banned uh, for children, uh, like promoting it to children. But now there's a blanket ban, I believe. So you're not going to see like rainbows all over the place. And, uh, you know, when you go into the supermarket, your products aren't going to be plastered in LGBTQ rainbows like they are in the West. Also, everybody, um, there's no cancel culture in Russia, okay? So companies here aren't cowing to the woke mob. Now, everybody, I found a very beautiful, tranquil spot down here by the river with a view of Peter and Paul Fortress. So the next topic I want to talk about is women, Russian women. And so, of course, Russian women have the reputation for being some of the most beautiful in the whole world. So it should come as uh, no surprise that many Western men would like to date a Russian lady. So the reasons for this are pretty obvious. So not only are they uh, very attractive, but they're also uh, ultra feminine. They take care of themselves. They wear sexy clothes. They wear perfumes. They go to the gym. Uh, very pleasant company. They're very polite. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, Western men and also men from other parts of the world that seek out Slavic women because of these qualities that they have. Now, I have a lot of friends in the West that are complaining about the dating scene. I don't know too much about it because I haven't spent much time in the West in the last 15 years or something like that. And I certainly haven't dated there, but the recurring complaint is that uh, Western women 
have become very entitled. Now everybody, age gaps are not so important in Russia like they are in the West. I find that the West is a very ageist society. So, like I said, I haven't dated for a long time in the West, but as I understand, a lot of women there are not prepared to date a man that's any more than five years older than herself. So uh, age really doesn't matter so much uh, here in Russia. So you can, you know, there's quite a lot of men here that are dating women half their age, for example. Now I know what you're thinking everybody, uh, that's because the women here are looking for money. Well, that is quite true a lot of the time. Um, yeah, so if you're 20-something year old woman, if you're going to be dating a man half, uh, twice your age, then of course he should have a bit of money, you know, give her a, uh, a certain kind of lifestyle. But that's not always the case and you can often find that uh, that kind of lifestyle that she wants is a lot cheaper here in Russia than it is in the West. So everybody, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that uh, dating Russian women is uh, generally a lot better than dating Western women. <laughs> so that also applies to uh, Belarusian women and also Ukrainian and to a lesser extent, some other ex-Soviet states. Now, don't get me wrong, there's obviously plenty of nice uh, women in the West that you can be very, very happy with. But um, yeah, on the whole, it's better in this part of the world, guys. Now, I also wanted to say that women in this part of the world are very uh, approachable and open to being accosted on the street. So yeah, you can talk to them on the street, in the parks, in the restaurants, in the bars, in the cafes, in the nightclubs, wherever you like and they're very rarely going to be rude. They're very polite to the people here on a whole. So even if they're not interested, they might say, look, I'm not interested or might try and get rid of you somehow or say I'm married or whatever, but they'll be very polite about it and you're not going to get those harsh blowbacks like you get in the West. Now, another thing we have to talk about is exoticism. So, you know, if you're a Western man, uh, chances are you're going to be, uh, you're going to look exotic in Russia. So if you don't have that classic Slav look, I don't know, maybe you're a tall guy with blonde hair and blue eyes or, you know, some dark features or something like that. And you look a bit different, then you're exotic and uh, the women are interested in you here. Some Western men, they like to go and find a potential Slavic partner at the source, you know, go to Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, somewhere like that, where others maybe prefer to find uh, these kind of women in their own countries. But um, I want to give you ex an example of something. I just found this frozen bottle of water that hasn't been opened on the ground. Now, this bottle of water maybe costs 20 rubles in the supermarket, but in a restaurant, it could cost 200 rubles. Or in an extreme, extreme case, in a nightclub, it could be 400 rubles. So men, this bottle of water is you, okay? So maybe in the country that you're in at the moment, you're a 20 ruble bottle of water. But if you move somewhere else, you can be a 400 ruble bottle of water. Oh, another thing to talk about is like sanctions and all that kind of stuff. So now in Russia, it's very difficult for Russian people to travel overseas. So um, I think uh, there's an increasing amount of women in Russia that are looking to get together with a foreign man for his passport. So yeah, this used to be the case in the former Soviet Union. I think now it's making a comeback. So yeah, very difficult for Russian people to go overseas at the moment. They need a visa for Schengen and not a lot of countries uh, issuing these. So yeah, uh, dating a Western man is becoming more attractive. And uh, of course there's minuses with this because there'll be a lot of women just looking for a Western man, you know, to get residency, a passport in another country. And then once she's there, she disappears. But that's a topic for another video. Now guys, another thing uh, I want to talk about is that a lot of foreigners I know in this part of the world would agree 
that uh, you shouldn't take a Russian woman or Belarusian or Ukrainian back to your home country. Now, the reason for that is because of what I've just mentioned. They could be just passport fishing. Then once uh, they get back to your home country, then they just disappear. Um, but also, uh, they become much more entitled a lot of the time, like Western women. So, you know, maybe in Russia, she was a nice, sweet girl and she was taking a bus to work every day for an hour and a half in each direction or something like that. You know, wasn't greedy, just wearing simple clothes. Then she gets back to the UK, USA, Germany, somewhere like that. And all of a sudden she looks around, she looks at the neighbors, they got a nice car and she thinks to herself, I want a car like that. Also in the West, it's a shopping paradise compared to here in the post-Soviet states. And the prices are much lower. So they get very excited in the West. They go in these shopping centers and they look at all these uh, kind of fancy clothes that are, you know, a third of the price that they are here. So you, yeah, you can see what happens. So a lot of men say that the women here are not for export. <laughs> so it's a good way to test your relationship. You know, you get together with a girl and she says, oh, why do you want to live in Russia? Blah, blah, blah. And if she's happy with you living in Russia together, then that's quite a good basis for the relationship. But if she says, no, I'm not, um, I'm not happy to date you here. I want to go and live in the West. And that's a red, um, that's a red warning sign. So in general, guys, uh, the dating scene here in Russia is much, much better than it is in the West. Because, yeah, back in Western countries, it's become very hostile um, for heterosexual men to date. If you're gay, then maybe it's a paradise. I don't know. Wow, look, everybody, an ice sheet is broken free. This is a clear sign of global warming. Or it could just be because it's sunny today. Wow, everybody, you don't see this on London Bridge. Right, everybody, so I could talk about the subject of women and dating here for hours, but let's uh, not make this video too long. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, cost of living. So in Russia, it's pretty cheap at the moment. Uh, by international standards or certainly by Western standards. So, yeah, the current exchange rate for the... What the hell was that? The firing cannons, I think, at the uh, Peter and Paul Fortress. I hope it's cannons anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, cost of living. So about 95 rubles to one British pound. Dollars about 78 or something like that. So, uh, yeah, especially if you have dollars here, then it's uh, pretty cheap. It's not like third world cheap, like, I don't know, Thailand or somewhere like that, but pretty cheap. Now, not everything's cheap here, but uh, let's uh, talk about some uh, things are cheap. Accommodation. Now, let's uh, talk about St. Petersburg. You know, Moscow is an expensive city, but uh, it's a bit cheaper here in St. Petersburg. So if you're renting an apartment here, uh, let's say it's a small studio, you know, you can, the starting price for that in the very center of St. Petersburg is like 25,000 and, you know, and then like two room apartment starts from about 40,000, something like that. And then the sky's the limit after that, because as you can imagine, there's some very posh and expensive apartments in St. Petersburg. 
Next, let's talk about the price of food in the supermarket. So, yeah, by Western standards, at least, it's reasonable, especially for the staple goods like uh, bread, eggs, milk, uh, fruit and vegetables and stuff like that. But of course, uh, sanctioned products uh, imported from other countries are going to be uh, much more expensive. So, yeah. Um, a lot of Russians are complaining about the prices of things going up, but as a Westerner here, you'll be, um, you know, you'll be pleased compared to the prices in America, the European Union, UK, etc. Now, one thing I do find uh, relatively expensive is eating out in Russia. The restaurants here, uh, yeah, they're a little bit pricey, and uh, the reason I say that is because the portions are pretty small here, they're girly portions. So, yeah, for a big bloke like myself, you know, I sit down at a restaurant and order this meal, you know, there's a piece of meat, then the garnish is like half a cherry tomato, like a cherry tomato sliced in half, and a slice of cucumber or something like that is quite heartbreaking. You know, especially compared to some other countries like Serbia, I would get double the amount of food for about the same price. They have to remember that eating out is something of a luxury for Russian people. They generally eat at home mostly and eat out for special occasions. So the next uh, thing to talk about for the cost of living is public transport. So public transport here is cheap and good. So on the metro, I think it's something like 65 rubles for a ride. And that's, you know, you can just turn up and pay that price cash or card or whatever. And I think the bus is about the same price and the trolley bus, it might be a little bit of difference, I can't quite remember. But yeah, it's cheap and it's very reliable. So they have a fantastic metro system here in St. Petersburg. And also I've had no problems with the buses and trolley buses and stuff like that. Now, it can be cheaper if you get some kind of card. Uh, but I'm not sure how you get one of those. So it goes down to about 45 or 44 rubles if you got some special card. So yeah, the public transport is much better here compared to my country. Every time I go back to the UK, it's absolute shambles. The trains are always late or cancelled. Uh, you know, people are on strike. Uh, you pay all this money for an expensive train ticket to get from, I don't know, the airport to wherever you live. And then you see it's a replacement bus service. So you paid all this money to, you know, travel on some bus. Oh, and taxis are very, very cheap here. Like, that's probably one of the cheapest aspects about living in Russia now. Uh, the starting fare on Yandex, which is the most popular taxi service, is something like 100 rubles or maybe even 80 rubles. I can't remember. So you can get some very cheap taxi rides here. And uh, it's not always cheap, you know, if you've had a few beers late at night and you check your Yandex app, you'll see that you're paying four times as much as you did, like uh, when you're going to the pub or whatever. So it can get expensive here, but generally very good value. Uh, a lot of the taxis here are uh, driven by people in the Caucasus regions. And also, as you saw in my last video, they have a lot of uh, food delivery here in Russia, they got Yandex, Yeda, the Russian equivalent of uh, Uber Eats. So you see guys cycling along uh, with big boxes on their back, delivering food or just walking as well. Sometimes they take the bus even and take their car. And it's very, very affordable. This, uh, the service at least, like the food, can be a bit expensive. Right, so the price of booze in this country, uh, if you buy it in the supermarket or the alcohol shop, then it's cheap, you know, you can get a big can of beer for about, I don't know, 40, 50 rubles or something like that. But in bars, it's not that cheap. I mean, the cheapest beer, generally speaking, in a pretty nice place is about 300 rubles or something like that. You can get less, of course. If you go to some uh, backstreet place out of the center. But yeah, it's all right, uh, not too bad. So, another thing to talk about is the price of uh, utility bills here in Russia. Very, very cheap. So, um, 
I'm not sure exactly how much they cost, but uh, let's put it this way. For, if you had a small kind of studio here uh, in uh, the summer months, you know, when, they don't ha when the heating turns off, you might not pay any more than, I don't know, 3,000 rubles a month, which is very, very good. And winter time that might go up to, you know, 50, maybe maximum 60, something like that. Or maybe less, I'm not sure. So yeah, in um, British money that works out at, you know, a maximum of 50 pounds a month, which is very, very cheap uh, compared to in the West. So that includes your, you know, tax and uh, water and all that kind of stuff, total. Now, another benefit for moving to Russia is all this stunning architecture around you. Now, of course, this is most pronounced here in the most beautiful city in all of Russia, St. Petersburg. But there are also other beautiful cities in Russia. Moscow is a beautiful city. Uh, you've got some other ones like Nizhny, Novgorod and uh, yeah many others there are of course some not so beautiful soviet cities but uh, yeah if uh, architectural splendor is important to you then uh, you're going to find what you want in this country Now, another great benefit of living in a major city like St. Petersburg or Moscow is that they're 24-hour cities. Now, I'm always shocked when I go back to the UK. I arrive at the airport in London, I'm driving through the outskirts of the city, and everything's closed. Now, this is like 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening here. Uh, a lot of the restaurants cafes and stuff are open till midnight and some of them are 24 hours so if you're a digital nomad type let's say and you've messed up your sleeping pattern somehow and you want to go to a coffee shop at two o'clock in the morning and drink coffee and have a sandwich you can do it now the historical center of st petersburg has got everything you want uh you got bakeries restaurants cafes and stuff like that it's a little bit different in moscow uh, because it's a bit more spread out here in the historical center it's condensed so uh, yeah you got lots of uh, places to go in and out of here now the next thing to talk about everybody is uh, produce in Russia now the Russian government has pretty much done a blanket ban on GMO food production which is fantastic because in the West uh, in America I think it's something like 70% and in the UK, it's something like 30% of all food produced is GMO. So you've got some very good quality produce in this country. Everything you could want is grown here. Maybe not bananas, but uh, yeah, if you uh, down in the southern regions where the climate is better, you get pomegranates, pomegranates, oranges, lemons, and all that kind of stuff, watermelons. So you've got just about everything you need here produced in Russia and not only that everybody if you're prepared to live in some very rural regions of Russia like Siberia and uh, you're a citizen of Russia or maybe a resident I'm not sure they even give you free land right everybody so that's about it for this video now I think I've given you some very compelling reasons why you should consider moving here to Russia so the technicalities of this we can talk about in another video we can talk about visas and stuff like that but just to let uh, Americans know that they get a very good deal here you get three-year tourist visas you just need to go in and out I think every 90 or 180 days or something like that so it's a better deal than I get for somebody from a so-called friendly country so anyway uh, yeah, we'll talk about more more about that in the future, but for now, uh, thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe and all that stuff, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.